Hey guys, welcome back. So don't make these mistakes buying a bike. Here's the top six red flags that I'm gonna share with you with what not to do. So number one, if the person who owns the bike is hard to get hold of, meaning that you call them, you text them, they say they'll get back to you, they don't, it's like a day or it's, it's really difficult to get hold of them, there's a red flag. Okay, genuinely, some people work long hours. But if they say they're going to get back to you, no one doesn't check their phone the whole day, right? People have breaks. Even truck drivers take a break and check their phone. If they really want to sell the bike and they're genuine about it, that would be a good indicator that they would get back to you. And that comes down to your communication style as well. If you indicate that you're serious about a bike and say, hey, I want to come and have a look at it. Not just making an offer on the bike. No, hey, I'm really interested. I'm keen. Can I come and have a look at it? Now, that's the first one. If they, if they can't get back to you with a definite time, there's a red flag. Number two, if you actually do speak to the person and they sound a bit weird, like they waffle on or they start talking about something that has nothing to do with the bike or they, you are just confused in the conversation, yeah? Like you just want to talk about the bike and the history of the bike and whatever, and you're confused. So you're dealing with someone that subconsciously has something to hide, yeah? Whether or not the bike's still a good buy or not, that's something different, but this is just a red flag. You need to have clarity when you're making a purchase, particularly with my motorcycle. So if you feel confused after the conversation, you're like, what the F, what just happened? I'm going to check out this bike, but I'm, I'm a little bit confused about this guy or girl. Um, there's a red flag because that's your intuition saying something's not quite right. Number three, if they say to meet at an unusual time or place, meaning that it's either really early in the morning or it's it's at night when it's dark, right? Again, some people work odd hours, but if they're looking for a sale, they'll make it work. If, you, if you're going to buy the bike, make sure it's in a well-lit environment if it's at night. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's got to be in the dark. But if it's an un, in an unusual place that isn't their house or isn't just in the street, I understand some people don't want to get ripped off. So they're not going to take you right into their house because there's a lot of bike thieves out there that you know go and check out a bike and then come back later on and steal it. I get it. But if they're saying to meet in a car park or, or a train station or something weird or you know you just feel a bit, it's a bit weird where they're saying to meet, there's a red flag there. So look at the time and place, right? Normally genuine people will be fine with just meeting them in, your, in their street, just outside their house, yeah? So... You know, it just depends on the bike though, but that's a red flag. Number four, you need to ask questions. So if you don't get straight answers, and again, you're confused with the answer, either you're not communicating well enough, right? So keep asking the question till you get the answer that you need, right? So when someone's trying to hide something, they will always deflect and start talking about something else. So if you're asking a straight question, you know, why, why isn't the bike starting straight up? Or why won't it start, why won't it, the kickstart work? Or why won't it start with the, you know, and if they gave you some excuse, a generalized excuse saying, oh, you know, these bikes are notorious for, or, or this and that and blah, 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 and tries to put it back on you saying, do you know about these bikes? Put it back on them and say, I don't need to know. I, what I need to know is why that's not working right now. Or what, what is this scratch here? Where did this come from? Do you know where this has came from? Straight questions need straight answers. If you don't get that, there's a red flag. Number five, if you catch them out and things don't make sense, so you're confused, they've said one thing and then they say something else that contradicts that, that is a big indicator that things aren't matching up. I'm not saying they're... they're intentionally lying but they are deceiving you in some way they are deflecting 
right? So there might be something wrong with the bike and they're deflecting it, talking about something else. So again, if things don't match up with what they're saying and what you're seeing, that's a red flag. You probably need to walk away. And number six, out of the top six red flags, and this one's an important one, take some time and ask your girlfriend how she feels about that person. And I want you to listen to her. I want you to listen to her because she has better intuition than you. I guarantee you now. She has better intuition with you. Women all, often, we say they have a sixth sense. They absolutely do. So speaking from experience, you need to listen to your girlfriend. If she thinks there's something wrong with the guy selling you the bike, that's probably an indicator to walk away. Um, and if you do buy the bike and there is something wrong, I guarantee you'll hear about it for a long time. So listen to your girlfriend. I hope this has helped you guys. Um, I know it's a bit of fun, but I, why I'm sharing this with you is because with this bike that you see here, I made all of those mistakes. So I'm speaking from experience. I was going to do a video on my woes with my WR450 and all the dramas, but I thought, no, that doesn't help anyone. What does help people is sharing my the mistakes that I made. So the reason that I overcame all that the reason I knew they were red flags and I still bought the bike, it was a lot of fun. So don't let that rush of adrenaline, that that few seconds or a couple of minutes, however long you take for, to do the test ride, don't let it overtake your intuition and, and your judgment making skills. Look at the red flags, listen to them. Speaking from a person from with experience in buying cars and now buying bikes your intuition is usually on point and things that are too good to be true usually are too good to be true so if it seems like a really good deal be guaranteed from a person speaking with experience with the bike that you're looking at now you either need to be ready to do a lot of wrenching a lot of work on the bike and it has to be that good a deal or completely walk away from it again i hope this helps this is just my opinion from my experience i'm sharing it with you um, if you want to check out my other videos please subscribe give it a thumbs up and i'll see you next time